through my years of experience. I've learned that there are five common mistakes that prevent the majority of Americans from becoming wealthy. The first reason why people don't become wealthy is that it never occurs to them that it is possible for them. Of course, if it never occurs to them, then they never take any of the steps necessary to make it a reality. The second reason that people don't become wealthy is that they never decide to. The great majority of people don't decide to be successful, even if it occurs to a person that he could become wealthy if he just did certain things in a certain way. If he doesn't decide to take the first step, he ends up staying as he is. If you continue to do what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always got. The third reason that people don't become wealthy is procrastination. People always seems to be a reason to procrastinate. As a result, they keep putting it off month by month, year by year, until it's too late. Even if it's occurred to a person that they can become wealthy and they have made a decision to change, procrastination will push all their plans into the indefit future, and nothing will ever happen. The fourth reason that people retire poor is the inability to delay gratification. The great majority of people have an irresistible temptation to spend every single penny they make and whatever else they can borrow or buy on credit. If you cannot delay gratification and discipline yourself to refrain from spending everything you make, you cannot become wealthy. If you cannot practice budgeting as a lifelong habit, it will be impossible for you to achieve financial independence. The fifth reason that people retire poor is perhaps as important. It's a lack of time perspective. Time perspective is defined as the amount of time that you take into consideration when planning your day-to-day -day activities and when making important decisions in your life. A young couple that begins putting $50 a month aside in a scholarship fund so that their newborn child can go to the college or university of his choice is a couple with long time perspective. They're willing to sacrifice in the short term to assure better results and outcomes in the long term. People with long time perspective almost invariably move up economically in the course of their lifetimes. Money tends to flow toward those people who can use it in the most productive ways to produce valuable goods and services and who can invest it to create employment and opportunities that benefit others. Money flows away from those who use it poorly or who spend it in non-productive ways. Here are the absolutely unbreakable laws of money. Number one is the law of abundance. This law says that we live in an abundant universe in which there is sufficient money for all who really want it and who are willing to obey the laws governing its acquisition. We live in a generous universe and we are surrounded on all sides by blessings and opportunities to acquire all we truly desire. Your attitude of either abundance or scarcity toward money will have a major impact on whether you become rich or not. The first corollary of the law of abundance says that individuals become wealthy because they believe they have the ability to become wealthy. They consistently do the things that turn their beliefs into realities. In the book, The Instant Millionaire by Mark Fisher, the old millionaire asks the boy who has sought his advice about becoming a millionaire, why aren't you rich already? This is an important question to ask yourself. Your answers will expose your self-limiting beliefs, your doubts, your fears, your favorite excuses, your rationalizations, and your justifications. Write down all the reasons you can think of. Go over your answers one by one with someone who knows you well and ask them for their opinion. Whatever your reasons or excuses, you can now get rid of them. The world is full of hundreds and thousands of people who have had far more difficulties to overcome than you could ever imagine. They've gone on to be successful anyway, and so can you. Number two is Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law is one of the best known and most important laws of money and wealth accumulation. It explains why most people retire poor. The least law says that no matter how much money people earn, they tend to spend the entire amount. Their expenses rise in lockstep with their incomes. Many people are earning today several times what they were earning at their first jobs. But somehow they seem to need every single penny to maintain their current lifestyles. The first corollary of Parkinson's law says Financial independence comes from violating Parkinson's law. It is only when you develop sufficient willpower to resist the powerful urge to spend everything you make that you begin to accumulate money and move ahead of the crowd. The second corollary of Parkinson's law is if you allow your expenses to increase at a slower rate than your income increases and you save or invest the difference, you will become financially independent in your working lifetime. This is the key. If you can drive a wedge between your increasing earnings and the increasing cost of your lifestyle and then save and invest the difference, you can continue to improve your lifestyle as you make more money. 
Americans from this point onward resolve to save and invest 50% of any increase you receive in your income from any source. Learn to live on the rest. Save 50% of any amount that you receive from any source whatsoever. This still leaves you the other 50% to do with as you desire. Number 3. The Law of Three This law says that there are three legs to the stool of financial freedom. Savings, insurance, and investment. One of your major responsibilities to yourself and to the people who depend on you is to build a financial fortress around yourself over time. To achieve this goal, you need to maintain the correct proportions of your finances in each of these threes, savings, insurance, and investment. The first corollary of the law of three says that to be fully protected against the unexpected, you require liquid savings equal to two to two to six months of normal expenses. Your first financial goal is to save enough money so that if you lost your source of income for up to six months, you would have enough put aside to carry you over. The very act of saving this amount of money and putting it into a high yielding savings account or a money market account will give you a tremendous sense of confidence and inner this money put away will make you a far more effective human being than you would be if you were worried about your next paycheck or your next bag of groceries. The second corollary of the law of three says that you must ensure adequately to provide against any emergency that you cannot pay for out of your bank account. Always carry sufficient insurance to protect yourself against an emergency that you cannot write a check to cover. Ensure sufficient health insurance to provide for yourself and others in any medical emergency. Perhaps the deepest need or craving of human nature is the desire for security. And without adequate insurance, you are taking risks that you simply can't. The third corollary of this law says that your ultimate financial goal should be to accumulate capital until your investments are paying you more than you can earn on your job. Your life is divided into roughly three parts, although these three parts tend to overlap. First, there are your learning years where you grow up and get your education. Then there are your earning years from approximately 20 to age 65. Finally come your yearning years when you can retire with the average life expectancy today approaching 80 years and rising. The simplest and most effective of all financial strategies is for you to save and invest your money throughout your working lifetime until your investments are paying you more than you can earn on your job. This seems like a very simple lifetime planning strategy, but it's remarkable how few people follow it and how many people end up at the age of 65 with very little put aside. Number four, the law of compound interest. Compound interest is considered to be one of the greatest miracles of all of human history and economics. When you let money accumulate compound interest over a long enough period of time, it increases more than you can imagine. You can use the rule of 72 to determine how long it would take for your money to double at any rate of interest. For example, if you are receiving 8% interest on your investment and you divide the number 72 by 8, you get the number 9. This means that it would take you nine years to double your money at 8% interest. The first corollary of this law says the key to compound interest is to put the money away and never touch it or spend it for any reason. Even if you spend only a small amount today, you will be giving up the potential for an enormous amount later on. If you start early enough, invest consistently enough, never draw on your funds, and rely on the miracle of compound interest, it will make you rich. Begin a regular monthly investment account and commit yourself to investing a fixed amount for the next five, 10, or even 20 years. Collect a company with a family of mutual funds and investment instruments, and keep your money working month after month and year after year. Number five, the law of magnetism. This law says that the more money you save and accumulate, the more, the more positive emotions you associate with your money, the more opportunities you will attract to acquire even more. The first corollary of the law of magnetism is that a prosperity consciousness attracts money like iron filings to a magnet. This is why it is so important for you to start accumulating money, no matter what your situation. First, put just a few coins into a piggy bank. Begin saving even a small quantity of money. That money, magnetized by your emotions of desire and hope, will begin to attract more money to you faster than you can imagine. The second corollary of the law of magnetism says, it takes money to make money. As you begin accumulating money, you start to attract more money and more opportunities to earn more money into your life. You'll be amazed at what starts to happen. 
the more time you take to think intelligently about your finances, the better decisions you will make and the more money you'll have to think about. And the more you think about your savings and investments, the more of them you'll attract into your life and finally have accelerating acceleration. This law says that the faster you move toward financial freedom, the faster it moves toward you. The more money you accumulate and the more success you achieve, the more and faster money and success seem to move towards you from a variety of different directions. Everyone who is financially successful today has had the experience of working extremely hard, sometimes for years before they got their first real opportunity. The major problem most successful people have is sorting out the opportunities that seem to come at them from everywhere. The first corollary of the law of accelerating acceleration says that fully 80% of your success will come in the last 20% of the time that you invest or put in. You'll achieve only about 20% of the total success possible for you in the first 80% of the time and money that you invest in an enterprise, a career or a project. You'll achieve the other 80% in the last 20% of the time and money that you invest. Let me summarize these laws of money. First, earn as much as you possibly can. The second key to money is for you to hold on to as much as you possibly can. Finally, invest it carefully and make it grow as rapidly as you can. You can become wealthy in a few years by saving every single month off the top as you go along.